This is the second episode of our ViewSonic series. If you haven't seen our other episodes, click the link in the description to see the entire playlist. The side toolbar is on both the left and right sides of the screen. They're exactly the same. There are two for convenience, so you don't have to run to one side of the board just to use the toolbar. You can also move the toolbar up or down if it's in your way. This back arrow is the first feature. Instead of needing to go all the way back to the home page to select the previous app you are on, you can use the back arrow to quickly switch back. The home button is pretty self-explanatory. It brings you back to the home page. These two layered rectangles allow you to switch between apps. Think of your ViewSonic like a giant Android phone. Tapping this button lets you see all the open apps and you can use the X to close them or clear all processes. These four squares let you see all your apps at a glance without needing to return back to the home page. The cloud is my whiteboard. This is an awesome app with so many opportunities for lesson creation. You can watch our dedicated My Whiteboard video to learn all about what it can do. The video camera allows you to take a screen recording. Choose the quality you want and tap the check. This button in the corner allows you to save the recording. Your ViewSonic has its own storage. Your recording will save to the ViewSonic. If you want to send it to yourself, you can plug in a flash drive, open the Files app, choose Downloads, and tap Send to save to your flash drive. Or you can save it to Google Drive by signing in to the cloud storage and saving the file to Drive. This marker tool is the Annotate tool. You can mark up any application you're using. You can change the color, highlight, erase, undo, redo, trash the design, or save it to the ViewSonic's internal storage. Note that tapping the X will clear your design, so that's why you'd want to tap Save if you want to keep it. You'd tap Save and choose ViewSonic's internal storage, which is called Local Storage. From there, you can move the file to your Google Drive or a flash drive just like we did with the screen recording. The three dots give you even more options. The screen with the snowflake lets you freeze the screen where you're at. I can zoom in, zoom out, and return the screen to the original. When I'm ready to unfreeze, I simply tap the X. From my personal experience, if you're presenting a slideshow and you don't want students to act silly and advance the slides by accident, I would connect your computer with the HDMI and USB cables, which is faster than using Freeze. You can unplug the USB cable when you don't need the touch, and that way students can't advance the slides. Then you plug it back in when you do want them to touch. The flashlight makes the screen dark and spotlights whatever area you put your finger. The stopwatch allows you to start and stop to time students during an activity. The timer allows you to choose a time to count down to. You can move both the stopwatch and timer if they're in your way. The screenshot button is similar to the screen record feature. It takes a picture of the entire screen, which saves to the ViewSonic. You'd want to move the screenshot into Drive or a flash drive like we did before. What should you do if the toolbar ever disappears? To get the toolbar back, you'd take your finger in the middle of the right or left edge of the screen, swipe toward the middle of the screen, and select the hide button to show the toolbar arrows on both sides of the screen.